Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to my classmates and Dr. Nur Akmal as our biology lecturer. So today, my group is going to present the topic 40.3 which is other endocrine glands and hormones. Thyroid gland is attached to the trachea below the larynx. It is weighing approximately 20 grams. It is composed of a large number of follicles, each a small spherical structure made of thyroid cells that produce the hormone thyroidothyronine T3 that contains three iodine atoms and thyroxine that contains four iodine atoms. Calcitonin is a hormone that are produced by the cells that reside outside the follicles of the thyroid gland. Thyroid glands actively acquire iodine. Insufficient amount of iodine consumption will cause the thyroid gland unable to produce the required amount of T3 and T4. This may result in constant stimulation of the thyroid by the thyroid stimulating hormone TSH released by the anterior pituitary. Then, the thyroid glands will enlarge, resulting in a condition called endemic goiter. The effects of T3 and T4 are hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Hypothyroidism is caused by insufficiency amount of T3 and T4. This will lead to congenital hypothyroidism. For example, babies that have this disease are in a condition where they are short and stocky, intellectually disabled. The immune body system produces antibodies that destroy the thyroid gland. Untreated hypothyroidism will result in mesedema. Hypothyroidism is caused by oversecretion of T3 and T4. It can also be caused by grave disease and thyroid cancer. Antibodies are produced and react with the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor on the thyroid follicular cells, mimicking the effect of TSH and causing the overproduction of T3 and T4. The typical signs of grave disease is exophthalmos or excessive prostitution of the eyes due to edema in the eye socket tissues and inflammation of the muscles that move the eyes. The patient with this disease usually becomes hyperactive, nervous, irritable and suffers from insomnia. This disease can be treated by drugs that block the iodine intake by the thyroid glands, surgical removal of part or all of the gland and the administration of radioactive iodine to destroy the overactive tissue. Thyroid cancer can be detected as a lump during a physical examination. This can be treated through surgery in combination and the administration of radioactive iodine. Calcium plays a significant role in both nervous conduction and muscle contractions. It is necessary for blood clotting and the muscle maintenance of healthy bones and teeth. The blood calcium level is regulated in part by calcitonin, which is a hormone secreted by the thyroid gland when the blood calcium level rises. Calcitonin helps in reducing the activity and the number of osteoclasts. When the blood calcium lowers to normal, the thyroid's release of calcitonin is inhibited. The deficiency of calcitonin is not linked with any specific disorder. Other than that, calcitonin also helps in bone building effects, which is reducing bone loss in osteoporosis. Parathyroid glands produce parathyroid hormone that are embedded in the posterior surface of the thyroid gland. Low blood calcium stimulates the release of parathyroid hormone, which will promote the activity of osteoclasts, raising the calcium from the bones. In the kidneys, Parathyroid hormone brings the activation of vitamin D where it stimulates the absorption of calcium from the small intestine. This effect brings the blood calcium level back to the normal range and parathyroid hormone secretion stops. Calcitonin and parathyroid hormone are antagonistic hormones because their action is opposite one another and both hormones work together to regulate the blood calcium level. Parathyroid glands removal cause insufficient parathyroid hormones which produce hypoparathyroidism. This will cause a drop in blood calcium level and excessive nerve excitability. Untreated hyperparathyroidism, which is oversecretion of parathyroid hormone, can result in osteoporosis because of the calcium release from the bones. It can also cause the formation of calcium kidney stones.
adrenal glands consists inner portion known as adrenal medulla and outer portion known as adrenal cortex. Both of them are functionally distinct endocrine glands. Stress will stimulate the adrenal glands. First, we'll send nerve impulse by sympathetic nerve fibers, which will make our body have neurological response to danger. For example, our heart rate will increase. And second, adrenal medulla will secrete adrenaline and noradrenaline, which will continue to respond to stress throughout the body. On the other hand, adrenal cortex have long term in terms of stress response, which means it is slow. So, adrenal cortex will secrete glucocorticoids. The flow is like this. First, hypothalamus will stimulate anterior pituitary, which will produce ACTH. This will cause the adrenal cortex secretes glucocorticoids. Cortisol, the most important glucocorticoids, will raise blood glucose level into waste. First, promote breakdown muscle protein to amino acid, which will be taken up by the liver and converted into glucose. And second, promote catabolism of fatty acid. This will spare glucose. Another type of glucocorticoids, which is cortisone, counteract the inflammatory response. It can reduce inflammation. Apart from that, adrenal cortex also secrete mineral corticoids. When our blood low of natrium, kidneys will secrete renin into blood. This will convert plasma protein angiotensinogen to angiotensinogen 1. And then, angiotensinogen 1 will convert into angiotensinogen 2 by an enzyme in lung capillaries. And lastly, angiotensinogen 2 will stimulate adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. Independently, adrenal cortex will release mineral corticoids. Aldosterone is the most important mineral corticoid. It will target kidney where it promotes renal absorption of natrium and renal excretion of calcium. This will help to regulate blood volume and also blood pressure. Kidneys then will reabsorb natrium and water from kidney tubules. Water is absorbed too as hypothalamus will secrete ADH and then the blood pressure will rise to normal again. Cushing syndrome happens when there are excessive glucocorticoids. The common cause for this syndrome is administration of glucocorticoids to treat other conditions. And also, this syndrome can be caused by tumors affect pituitary gland or adrenal cortex itself. This will make muscle protein to be metabolized, subcutaneous fat will be deposited in the mixed section, and also, there are excess production adrenal male sex hormone which will cause masculinization for women. For example, increase in body hair and also deepening voice. The treatment for this uh, syndrome are first careful reduction of cortisone, second cortisol inhibiting drugs and third surgery to remove the tumor. Pancreas is an abdomen that stretches behind the stomach and near the duodenum of the small intestine. This organ plays an important role in converting the food we eat into glucose which acts as fuel for the body's cell. The pancreas is composed of two types of tissue, which are exocrine tissue and endocrine tissue. Exocrine tissue produces and secretes digestive juices, while endocrine tissue produces and secretes the hormones insulin and glucagon directly into the blood. When the blood glucose level is high, the pancreas secretes insulin. Insulin promotes the storage of glucose as glycogen and the synthesis of proteins and fats. Thus, the blood glucose level lowered to normal. When the blood glucose level is low, the pancreas secretes glucagon. Glucagon acts opposite to insulin, which raises the blood sugar level by breaking down glycogen into glucose. Therefore, the blood sugar level rises to normal. Diabetes can be described as the inability of the body's cell to take up glucose as they should. This causes the blood glucose to be higher than normal and cells rely on other fuels such as fatty acids for energy. Symptoms of diabetes include frequent urination, increased thirst, and etc. Different types of diabetes such as type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, 
prediabetes and gestational diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, also called as juvenile diabetes, happens when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin. This condition is usually brought on by exposure to an environmental agent, most likely a virus. The presence of the virus causes cytotoxic T cells to destroy pancreatic islets. The body turns to the metabolism of fat, which leads to the buildup of ketones in blood, ketoacidosis, and increasing the acidity of blood, which can lead to coma and death. Type 2 diabetes, also called as adult onset diabetes, happens when the adipose tissue produces a substance that impairs insulin receptor function. However, type 2 diabetes can also involve genetic factors. Normally, the binding of insulin to its plasma membrane receptor causes the number of protein carriers for glucose to increase, causing more glucose to enter the cell. In this type of diabetes, insulin still binds to the receptor, but the number of glucose carriers does not increase. The cell is said to be insulin resistant. Now, let's move on to testes and ovaries. In males, there are testes, while in females, there are ovaries. The testes produces testosterone, meanwhile the ovaries produces estrogen and progesterone. These hormones provide feedback that controls the hypothalamic secretion of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, the pituitary gland secretion of follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone is controlled by feedback of the sex hormones too. The production of testosterone begins during fetal development, continues for a short time after birth, then resumes at puberty. The testes released an increased amount of testosterone at the time of puberty, which then stimulates the growth of testes and penis. The effects of testosterone are listed in this mind map. In addition, the testes also produce the peptide hormone inhibin that inhibits the secretion of FSH which stimulates spermatogenesis from anterior pituitary gland. Since it is partially responsible for muscular strength of males, some athletes consume a lot of anabolic steroids which are either testosterone or other related chemicals. Some dangerous side effects of consuming anabolic steroids are listed in this diagram. For the ovaries, the primary hormone secreted by the ovaries is estrogen, which includes estradiol, estriol, and estrone. It plays an important role in physiological processes which are listed in this mind map. Another important hormone is progesterone that also contributes in the regulation of the menstrual cycle and also the preparation of the body for pregnancy. Both estrogen and progesterone are required for breast development and the regulation of uterine cycle. Pineal gland is located deep in the human brain and it is responsible for the production of melatonin. Melatonin involves our daily sleep-wake cycle. The production of the melatonin can be observed in this figure shown. This is also called a circadian rhythm that is controlled by an internal timing mechanism called a biological clock. Melatonin is used in therapy for certain sleep disorders related to circadian rhythm abnormalities. Its functions and secretions may be impaired due to accidental and developmental issues such as pineal tumors that affects the sympathetic innervation of pineal gland and alters the melatonin secretion. Some vertebrates have pineal glands on top of their brains and some fossilized reptiles have an extra skull hole covered by a thin layer of skin. Pineal lactomy inhibits reproduction in birds, rodents, and seasonally breeding mammals. Melatonin increases the release of gonadotropin inhibitory hormone, which causes gonadotropins to be suppressed, resulting in the disruption of reproduction. Because it has light sensing cells, this gland also serves as the third eye. Next, the thymus. It is located just below the sternum and it plays an important role in immunity, autoimmunity, and aging. It reaches its largest size and is most active during childhood. After puberty, this gland will shrink and be replaced by fat. Thymus is vital in development and maturation of T lymphocytes or T cells, which are a type of white blood cell that protects the body from dangers such as viruses and diseases, both before birth and during childhood. It produces and secretes thymosins, which is responsible for T cell development and production. They will travel to the lymph nodes once they have fully matured. 
However, if they reside in the lymph nodes or the thymus, it can develop into cancer known as Hodgkin disease. Prostaglandins is a potent chemical sinus produced in cells from aricardinate, a fatty acid. Prostaglandins help in increasing the secretion of prostatin mucus in the stomach and prevent gastric ulcers, lower the blood pressure and use to treat hypertension, and lastly, inhibit platelet aggregation and use it to prevent thrombosis. Prostaglandins mediate the effects of parogen, for example, aspirin that reduces the body temperature and controls the pain because it prevents the synthesis of prostaglandins. The example of prostaglandins are misoprotol that prevents the stomach ulcers.